Welcome back to the Vim Tips and Tricks series. In today's video, we're going to talk about Vim's way of handling open files. The concept is called buffers. The word may sound intimidating at first, but it's really a cool concept. We'll go over the creation and removal of buffers and how to manage and switch between them. So enough with the introduction, let's dive right into it. Hi, my name is Marco. Let's get started. So what is a buffer? It's quite simple. Every time you open a file in Vim, it's loaded into memory as a buffer. There's also the concept of windows in Vim and windows are just a viewport into a buffer. By default, Vim opens only one buffer with a single window as a viewport into this buffer. But you can have as many buffers open as you want. Each of those buffers can be in one of three states, active, hidden or inactive. Active means the file is loaded into the memory and is also displayed by a window. Hidden means that the file is loaded into memory but not actively displayed in any window. Inactive means that the buffer is not displayed and it doesn't contain anything. Enough theory for now. Let's see how buffers work in practice. So we're still in our shell in this Vim buffers directory. Let's see what files are here. Let's open up the first one, CLI tool replacements in Vim. So now Vim loaded this file into memory as a buffer. It's also directly displayed in this window. So this is the active buffer for now. We can get a list of our buffers with ls. So currently we just have this one buffer, CLI tool replacements. So let's open up a few more files. Let's use the edit command for that. Go into command mode, edit, and just tab our way through the files we have here. So let's open comparing fuzzy finders, and also let's open origins of Vim. So now we have multiple buffers open. Let's see the list again with ls. Each of these buffers has a name, it also has an index, and it also has a status and some other symbol there. The current buffer is marked with a percentage sign, so Origins of Vim is the buffer we currently have open. Then there's the concept of the alternate buffer, that's the last buffer you've been to. You can quickly switch between the last buffer and the current buffer with a shortcut we'll see later. And the H in this list means the buffer is hidden, and the A means it's active. So let's switch a little bit around between these buffers. There are a few methods you can do this. For example, if I wanted to switch to the next buffer in the list, I can simply type buffer next, and now I'm at comparing fuzzy finders. Let's list out the buffers again. The percentage sign is now at buffer number two, comparing fuzzy finders, and origins of Vim is marked as the alternate buffer. To switch quickly between the alternate buffer and the current buffer, you can use control caret. So you can spam this and switch between those buffers very quickly and very easily. So if you only have two files you're switching between, this is a very handy shortcut. By the way, in the comments of one of my last videos, there was a request to create an official Vim cheat sheet from my side. So I actually did that and it's linked in the description below. Feel free to take a look. Let's list the buffers again. Also, you can use the index to jump to a buffer. So if I wanted to jump to CLI tool replacements, I can simply type B and then the index. And now I'm at the item replacements. What you can also do is use the name or parts of the name. So if I wanted to go back to origins of Vim, I can simply type B Ori and I would switch to origins of Vim. So a few moments before I showed you the B next command, there's also the B previous command that you can use to switch to the previous buffer in the list. And let's list out the buffers again. You can also switch to the first or the last buffer in this list with two commands. These commands are B first, this is now switched to the first buffer in the list with the first index. And we can also use the last, go to the last buffer in the list. You can also close buffers without closing Vim. For that, we can use the bd command. So bd followed by an index or whatever. Let's close the one with the first index that was the CLI tool replacement one. So just use index one. And now if we list the buffers again, we see we only have two buffers open and the CLI tool replacements are just gone from here. We can also create a new file, which is also loaded into a buffer, even if it's not written on disk yet. So let's use E for that, E new buffer text. Now we also have this buffer open, let's list it out. We see this buffer has the index 4 now, so buffer indices are always unique across sessions. So let's talk about something that tripped me up a little bit when I discovered buffers and switching between them. Let me show you. We're gonna add a line here, like and subscribe. Always have a really great line to add to some files and to talk to about in these videos, I think. And now let's go back to normal mode. Let's try to switch a buffer now. Let's just write bn for bnext. Now if you look at the bottom of the screen here, 
we get this error 37, no write since last change. So by default, Vim is configured in a way that it doesn't allow for changing to another buffer if you have changes on the current buffer and didn't write them to disk yet. There are a few things you can do about this. First thing is of course, uh, write the changes to the file and then you could switch. So let's try this first. So we're gonna write. And now if we do BN for buffer next, we can switch to the other buffer. Let's switch back again with control caret. So let's make another change here. Thank you. And now if you want to switch again, it won't work again, right? So let's try it again, just so that you see that it still doesn't work. So if we try to switch, we see this error again. So let's try a different way here. We could use BN again, and then we could force it with the exclamation mark. It's the force operator here in Vim. So let's try this. And you see, we could switch this way, no problem. Let's switch back again. What you can also do is set an option for this. You can set the option hidden. This option allows you to switch to different buffers even if the current buffer you're on is not written to this yet. So let's try again switching BN and this time it works like a charm without problem. So this option I always set in my config file. I think in NeoVim this is also the default actually. Let's check. So this page actually tells you about the differences between NeoVim and Vim. If we scroll down a little bit, we see some defaults are different than the configuration options in um, Vim. And one of these options is this hidden. This is enabled by default. So in new Vim, you won't run into this problem. So these are the most important commands you need for buffer management. I'd recommend to create some keybinds for these commands. So maybe leader P for previous and leader N for next buffer, things like that. Just a little recommendation from my side. Also, don't forget, I will link a Vim cheat sheet in the description, which will also include all the commands we covered today here. If you have any suggestions what I should cover next, please drop a comment below. Right here you can learn about some more Vim tricks. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching. See you around and take care.